Let's talk about our AWS Network Security Architecture and what we really did in AWS Network Security, Security Group Part 1 and AWS Network Security, NACL Part 2 lab demonstration videos. Take note, the main difference of security groups and NACLs are security groups are applied to EC2 while NACLs are applied to subnets. Security groups are stateful and you don't need to allow return traffic. Knuckles, on the other hand, are stateless, and you are required to allow return traffic. Okay, so let's talk about first the components, the network architecture of our network security lab. And uh, first, we have the internet, which is the public network. Then we have our AWS, Amazon Web Services, which is our cloud service provider. And here are the components. First, we have our EC2 instance, and it's running Apache Web Server listening on TCP443. We have our second EC2 instance. This runs MySQL database server and listening on TCP3306. Our client doesn't directly connect to EC2 Apache web server. Instead, it has an ELB running, and this is in front of our EC2 Apache web server. Again, the web server is behind the elastic load balancer with a dedicated network. And the database server also has a dedicated network. The load balancer has a domain name or DNS, and this is accessible by the clients. But for this to be successful, the IP address of the load balancer must be translated and must be routed to the internet. This is where the internet gateway comes in. Now, let's talk about VPC or virtual private cloud. Also, the subnets allocated for each component. And we have a custom VPC. We name this lab vpc and has a cidr of 10.10.0.0/16 and from this cidr we created three subnets first the load balancer subnet 1 with a value of 10.10.1.0/24 next web server subnet with a value of 10.10.10.0/24 and lastly we have the database subnet with a value of 10.10.20.0/24. Both web server and the database subnet can route to each other. Okay. In our initial testing, we directed our web browser to the load balancer or DNS URL with a value of web-lb-93 yada yada. And we're on able to receive a response from the Apache web server. And why? Because there is no security groups allowed rules configured yet. Now, it's time to configure security group to our EC2 instance Apache web server. We first configured inbound rules. And by default, there are no rules or no allowed traffic. And all we needed to do is allow HTTPS listening on port 443 or TCP port 443. And since this is inbound traffic, we can only configure the source. And since we're allowing clients from the internet, we just allowed 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0. When we tested from the client to Apache web server via load balancer DNS, it was good. It was successful, but in our second testing, it was specifically for web press application. Well, technically, it runs in Apache Web Server, but needed to connect to and gather data from the database server. This time, it failed. And why? Because we haven't configured yet our database security group. And before we configured our database security group, we also needed to add outbound rule for our web server security groups. We allowed MySQL application listening on TCP 3306 
and configured the destination. The destination is database security group, or we can optionally use or configure the subnet of the database server, which is 10.10.20.0 slash 24. Then we configured our database security group. All we needed to do is configure the inbound rule and allow MySQL application listening on TCP 3306. And the source is, well, from Web Server Security Group or optionally from Web Server Subnet, which is 10.10.10.0 slash 24. Then we tested if we can now access our WordPress application connecting to MySQL database server. And it was successful. Now, let's move to the NACL configuration or the part two of our AWS network security tutorials. Before we created NACL, everything was working properly and secured using security groups applied to our EC2. In part two, we used NACL to further enhance security. We added security at the network or the VPC level. This is actually confusing, you know? That's why we're going to dissect all three knuckles one by one. The first one is the load balancer knuckle that is applied to the load balancer subnet one. We configured inbound rules. This rule number is rule number 100. And this is when we allowed HTTPS or TCP port 443 from the internet. Then we configured the outbound rule rule number 101 this is to allow the forwarding traffic of https from the load balancer to the web server now on the second knuckle web server knuckle which is attached to web server subnet we added inbound rule rule number 100 we allowed https tcp 443 traffic from the internet to accept the traffic forwarded by the load balancer. Okay. Still in the web server knuckle, we added the outbound rule, rule number 101, to connect to MySQL application listening on TCP 3306 to our database server. We also added inbound rule allowing MySQL traffic from web server, but this time, this rule is added in our database server NACL, which is attached to the database subnet. As you can see, these are all traffic from one component to another, from the internet, to the load balancer, to the web server, to the database server. These are all requests from the client. And this is also called the downstream traffic. Now, Let's continue. Let's talk about the upstream or the return traffic. From the database server NACL, we allowed the database return traffic. This is outbound rule, rule number 100. And from the web server NACL, we allowed the return traffic from the database server. This is inbound rule, rule number 101. Also from the web server NACL, we allowed the return traffic to the load balancer. This is outbound rule, rule number 100. From the load balancer knuckle, we allow the traffic from the web server. This is inbound rule, rule number 101. And finally, also from the load balancer knuckle, we allow the return traffic back to the client. I hope you have learned something as many AWS professionals find this topic really confusing. This is actually kind of a basic if you are into networking, specifically in data center networking with application load balancers. Comment below if you have any questions and don't forget to hit the like button.